If you missed out being an early adopter of React or React hooks, Meta is giving you another chance with a new library called Stylex, which handles building CSS at build time. Now, it's not new to them. They've been using it in production for three years now on Facebook.com, but it is new to us because it's right now going into open source and it completes the trifecta of their web application architecture stack. That would include GraphQL for data management, React for the DOM, and now Stylex for styling. But is it right for our applications? Let's go into the office and find out. All right, the first place you're going to want to look when you start out with Stylex is the Stylex documentation site. In particular, I would go into the Thinking in Stylex section. As you go through this, it's really good to understand the core concepts and how they think about Stylex and how to use it in your application. So this is a fantastic place for that, as well as, of course, the API and what you're going to include in your project and all that. Another place you're going to want to look, particularly if you're doing Next.js, is the Next.js starter project. This project is already configured to use the Next.js app writer as well as Stylex, so it's a great way to get started. Of course, a link to this project as well as all the code that you're going to see in this video is in the description right down below. But let's get right into it and start playing around with Stylex. So what I've done is take that Stylex starter project and just pared it down a little bit. It initially had all of the Next.js landing page done in Stylex, and it's a bit overwhelming to take a look at. Let's go and take a look at the starter kit as we have it right now. So now we just have a starter page that says, hello, let's go take a look at how we did that in Stylex. So over in the layout file, which is the base layout for our app router application, we have gone and brought in Stylex. We're going to use Stylex to do Stylex.create, and that's going to register our styles for this application. And so for these particular styles, I want to define the styles for body. And I'm just going to call it body to make it easy. So in there, we're going to set the font to sans serif. And then we're going to set the background color and the color to either white on black or black on white, depending on a media query. And this is one of the first things you learn how to do in Stylex is to use media queries like this inside of your style definitions. Now, in Stylex, when it comes to media queries, you want to start with the attribute you want to change. For example, background color. So you're going to start with the default value. So when we don't have that media selector, we're going to say it's going to be white. But when we get that media selector, we're going to say that it's black. And that makes it really easy to go and define how you want to change that attribute based on that media selector. Now, to apply that to the body tag, we're going to use stylex.props. Now, stylex.props can take as many elements as you want to it in order of precedence. We only have one here, the s.body. So s was created by stylex.create and then body within that. And then you're going to destructure the output of Stylex props and put them into the properties of the component that you're attaching them to. For example, in this case, body. In most cases, that means that you're just going to set the class name. But if you have dynamic properties, it means that it's also going to export a style. So this makes it easy for Stylex to be able to control both class name and style. We're going to follow exactly the same pattern over in our page. Our page is going to set the layout for everything. So it's going to be a flex-based layout with column direction and aligning all the items in the center and then adding a little gap between each item and some padding at the top to make it all look nice. And then we're going to use that as the definition inside the main tag. And then we're just going to put some content in there. So in this case, an H1 for hello. Now I removed the CSS reset in this example. So the H1 comes through as an actual H1. That's up to you and your project as to whether you want to do a reset or not. Stylex gives you all the capabilities to do all of that. All right, so let's go make just a simple button. I'm going to go over into Components. I'm going to create a new file called button.tsx. And into there, I'm going to bring Stylex. I'm going to export our button. It's going to have an on click as well as children. We use stylex.create to create styles. And then we'll have a base style for our button that'll have some nice styling to it. So a blue button uh, with a white text. It's going to look nice. And we use that stylex.props, and we just give it the styles.base to start with. Let's hit save. Let's go bring that over in our page. We'll import it, and then we'll make one. And it looks pretty good. Let me up the scale a little bit so we can see it. And that's a good looking white on blue button. But what if we want to be able to override things, for example, like the color of the button and the color of the text on top of it? Well, let's go and make our button stylable. So we'll go over into button. And from here, we'll bring in stylex styles as a type. 
that we're going to use to say what styles that we want to be able to actually change. So down in here, we'll say that we have an optional style. And if I were to just leave it like this, it would mean that I could override any style that I wanted on the button. But I want to have more control than that. I want it so that you can only go and override either the background color or the color of the text or both. So to do that, I just use the TypeScript templating syntax, and I just give it the attributes that I want you to be able to change. For example, in this case, the background color and the color. Now I'll bring that in as style, and then we'll simply apply it at the end of props so that now we say use the base styles, but prefer styles to those. Let's hit save, and we'll go over and we'll create a red button. Now to use that, we have to create a style in this file so that we can send it as the styles to our button. To do that, we're going to create a new button styles using stylex create. And then we're going to say, well, we have a red variant here. So it's going to be button styles red. So let's go and apply that to our button. And this is going to give us blue text on a red button. This is going to look hilarious, but let's give it a go. Ooh, that looks nasty, but it's good. And that's exactly what we wanted. Now, if you're looking at this syntax and you're like, oh, this is really painful listing out all the CSS like this, I'd much rather use Tailwind, and, but I still want that same level of control that I want here. I want to have this button and only be able to change the background color and the color. Well, let's actually go and see if we can do that in Tailwind. So I've created another project. It's called Tailwind Test. And in that project, I've created a button component. It uses Tailwind. And it's essentially going to give us exactly the same button. And we have these overrides for background color and color that are optional. And all we're doing is, is we're just appending them to the string of the class name. So that means that, sure, by default, button would give us that same button. And assuming if someone wanted to use this correctly, they could set the background color to BG Red 500 and the text color to blue, but they could also go and do something like this, where they go and add on some extra margin, and they just override it. How would we know that they're doing that? No clue. There's no way to go and say that they can only go and change these particular things. And so that's why when you're using Tailwind as your design system, it's really, really hard to constrain what people do with the components. So why is constraining how you restyle components in a design system a good thing? It seems really restrictive, right? Well, think about it from the perspective of an infrastructure team. You're on an infrastructure team in a big company. Your job is to create a library of components that you're giving off to those teams. And now with StyleX, you have the tools that you can use to say, you can only restyle the component with these particular attributes. So if your component, for example, needs particular positioning or layout, they can't go and override that. You can make sure that the style attributes that they can override are limited such that as you release new versions, they're always going to be compatible with previous versions of that component. So it's a fantastic way to make sure that you can create a maintainable design system in your organization. And of course, what would a design system be without theming? So let's talk about how to do theming in StyleX. So we're going to create some button style tokens. So we'll call those button tokens .stylex.ts. So in this case, instead of stylex.create, we're going to use stylex.define vars to define variables. And we can name these anything we want. In this case, we're going to name it background color and text color. They don't need to match the CSS styles that they might be being applied to. Now, let's go bring in those tokens into our button. For example, instead of hard coding blue here, we'll set this to button tokens BG color. And we'll do that for the rest of these. And now we can see everything looks exactly the same, which is awesome. So let's go and make this themable. Let's go and make those overridable. So we're going to bring in theme as a type. And then down in our props, we're going to allow ourselves to take a theme. And we're going to say that that theme must match the schema of button tokens. And then we're going to bring that into the prop. And we're going to add it in as the base of our style props. And that way, it defines the variables, and then it adds the base styles, which are based on those values. 
and then it overrides anything that the consumer has brought in, like the background color or the color. Let's take a look. Still good to go. So now let's go over into our page and actually create a theme. To do that, we first need to bring in those button tokens that we created. And now we use Stylex Decorate Theme to create a theme called Corporate Theme. And you can use media selectors in that theme. For example, you can say, in dark mode, the background color should be white as opposed to black. And the text color should be black as opposed to white in the dark mode. You know what I'm talking about. All right, let's try this out. We'll create a new button down here with that corporate theme called Corporate Button. And there you go. A pretty blah looking corporate button, but it matches the theme that we specified. But obviously we don't want to apply theme to every single button. That's kind of crazy. How do we apply theme to the whole thing? What we can do is we can go and take that corporate theme and literally put it on any style X that we want all the way down. So for example, here, you can put it in corporate theme. And there you go. Now the base button, which we didn't add any preferences to in terms of color, is now on that theme of the corporate theme. In fact, this is old school style like syntax. Let's go fix this. Replace the class name with the destructured props. Much better. This is how you should write style X. And one last thing, let's talk about how to make more dynamic styles. So we'll go over to button and we'll allow our button to be emphasized. So we'll make emphasized a Boolean and we'll bring that in as a prop. And then up here, let's say we'll have a emphasis. And that's going to give it font white bold. And we'll just toggle that based on that emphasized flag. And we'll say if we are emphasized, then we'll use that style.emphasis. All right, let's go take a look at our page. Let's go make an emphasized button. We'll say that's bold, hit save, and now we have that bold button that has that emphasized theme. And of course, if you want to do fully dynamic styles like top, left, width, height, of course, StyleX supports those too using the dynamic support. So I got to tell you, in my opinion, having built design system components for large companies in the past, I don't think there's any better tool that I've seen for doing this work than StyleX. I'm really thankful from Meta for having open source to this. Thank you everyone. I hope you enjoyed this style X video. And if you really liked the video, leave a comment down below along with your like. And if you really wanna see more of me and my content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little bell hook to keep and get a notification the next time Blue Collar Coder posts yet another video. All right, that's actually really good. <laughs>